This is the Stuart Golf Q Follow. And the very first time I ever used it, it fell over twice. And to be honest, I found it more stressful than using my regular electric trolley. I was kind of hoping for a slightly better first impression, but I've used it a few more times now out on the course. So in this video today, I'm gonna let you know five key things that you need to know about the Q Follow, what it's actually like to use, and whether or not you should buy one. Initially, I found using the Q Follow a little bit more stressful than just my regular electric trolley. And that's because there's three different modes to choose from with the Q Follow. You either have a completely manual mode where you wheel it about using the handlebars yourself, or you have the remote control mode, or then you have the follow mode, which is what I've got it on right now. And it's not as simple as just putting it on follow and away you go. And to be fair, Stuart Golf do make that very, very clear. They suggest that using the trolley in a car park, you should actually have it on manual mode. Now, the thing is when using it on manual mode is that you actually have to clip the wheels out so then slightly not attached to the motor and then you can free wheel it. But I don't really want to have to be doing that every time. So what you can do instead is actually just use the remote in one hand and have one hand on the trolley and guide it around. Now, that might take a little bit of getting used to for some people. Then once you're in the course, you have to choose between using it in follow mode and remote control mode. And the reason why is because as good as follow mode is, you can see there, it's going a little bit left, a little bit right, in tight spaces, or if you're coming up to bunkers, or the green, or areas which could give it a little bit of trouble, then, well, you're gonna to need to use the remote control instead. Now, the remote control is pretty simple to use. It's nice and easily laid out, and it actually has a really good range. You can use it from pretty far away, but you just have to make sure that you're present to be thinking, am I okay with the trolley in follow mode, or should I actually be using the remote control here? And that's the reason why I actually tipped it over twice within the first three holes of using it, because I had it in follow mode, and I hadn't thought about the edges of the path that I was walking along, and the trolley caught a really severe edge, and that over she went. Just to be clear though, you will get used to having the awareness of when is a suitable time for the trolley to be following you, and when is a suitable time for you to actually be using the remote. And I'll show you one other thing that I really like about the trolley and having it on a remote once I get over this bunker. Well, I managed to pick that up all right. Oh, just middle of the green. Now what I do really like about having the remote I just pick up the camera here is that in fact if I just now go grab my putter so we'll put my 60 degree wedge out we'll grab my putter because that's what I'm going to need next and the first tee is way over there then actually I can nice and easy set the trolley on its way as long as I keep a little eye on it I know that there's nothing in front of it for a little while I can now be looking at my approach be thinking about what I need to hit for my next putt Trolley's still way over there. You can still control it nice and easy. Let's just speed it up a little bit. Around she comes. We can still now be chatting to our friends. Yeah, I managed to miss the bunker that time. Thanks, pal. Trolley's still nicely working its way to the next hole. It's kind of one less thing to think about. Although, you still need to be thinking about controlling the blooming thing. You know what? That would do right there. Not a problem. Can we make a birdie putt on camera? Keep turning, keep turning. I'll take that. Oh man, these greens are pretty dry. When it's open enough and you have the trolley in follow mode, it is a wonderful way to play golf. It is incredibly freeing. Just not having anything in your hands, except a camera when you're filming a review. You have the ability to talk with your friends openly, to really just kind of take in your surroundings, which is so, I mean, occasionally we kind of take for granted as golfers. You can think and prepare for the next shot. You can be kicking yourself mentally for the stuff you just hit off the tee. When you're in this mode, this does make golf better. But is it worth the money? Does it make golf that much better? Stick around to find out. Now you can see here that this is a real steep slope and the trolley is doing its best to slow down, but it is running away from me a fair old bit. Do you where the remote is? We can just say stop right there. She locks her wheels. So, catch back up to her a little bit. Set her on her way again. I wouldn't trust it to walk in front of it on this steep of a slope. 
So you've just got to have your wits about you a little bit while using this trolley. It's like Tesla's autopilot mode. You still have to keep your hands on the wheel. You still have to be driving the car, even though the car is kind of driving you. And it's the same with the Q follow. You can see here, that's on the slowest speed it's going or it's got, and it's running away from me. If that was in front of me, I think it'd be nipping at my ankles. One thing to note on the wheels, I said before that it locks, but it doesn't actually have a full on parking brake. So if you do park the trolley on a severe slope, it will creep away from you. You can see here that this pretty steep incline isn't giving this trolley any problems at all. And even if it did, you've got those wheels on the back as well, which will stop it from tipping up. So even if I speed it up and take, make a drastic turn up the hill, you can see that on the wheels there, not a problem for this trolley whatsoever. I want to talk about the size and the weight of the trolley. So it does fold down in a very clever way. To begin with, when you unpack it, it is in this very small form factor and there's a nice carry handle to pick it up from as well. You put it on its kind of upright hind legs and then you unfold the front wheels using a button and then you pull the unit up, you push a button in on the side and then you pull the handles up. So it does really fold down nice and small for the boot of your car. It is pretty heavy though. I mean, if you've got a bad back or can't really lift significant weights, this might not really be the trolley for you. Getting it out of your car or even just getting it out of your shed can take considerable effort. And to be honest, I can't really be bothered to unfold it all, turn it on, remote control it to my car, only to pack it back down again. So definitely something to think about. The build quality of the Q-Follow is pretty good. Stuart Golf pride themselves on the materials and the processes they have to make this as robust a trolley as you would expect for the money that you're paying for it. And on this version they've sent me, we've got some nice carbon fiber touches here on the wheel arch. And you have this kind of brushed pattern on the plastic. And overall, it does feel pretty sturdy in the majority of places. There are a few areas that I would want to highlight though, if you were thinking of buying one. Now, first of all, it might be because this is a loan unit that's been through various YouTube and internet reviewers, but the button here can get a little bit kind of stuck and you have to really kind of push it in. And one of the first things that I did notice with the trolley was the amount of play you've got in the plastic here. Can you see that? That's a really kind of wobbling about a bit. The other thing I'd say as well is the actual handles themselves feel a little bit kind of cheap. The handles on my Moto Caddy M1, which is pretty much an entry level model, feel a lot more robust, a lot bigger, and just nicer to hold compared to this one. Now, I appreciate that you're not going to be using the handles that much, but they're there. And it would have been nicer if they feel a little bit higher quality. You do have some nice touches on this. So you can see here that you have got your scorecard holder in a pencil holder located here. You've got a nice handy clip, which easily just fits the remote on. There we go, like that. So you can just kind of keep it there if you want to. And again, when you fold it down, you can actually clip the remote in that little section right there. The straps themselves are really easy to attach to pretty much any bag. They're nice and chunky, got a lot of good grip to them. Didn't have any worries about that coming undone. And then you've got a pretty simple strap on the bottom with this plastic handle. You can see that you've got a screw point in the front here as well. So you can buy additional accessories like umbrella holders and cup holders and things like that. The final main thing that I wanna talk about is battery life. So as standard, it comes with an 18 hole battery and that will last you more than 18 holes. It is quite an efficient battery and motor. So you don't really have to worry about it running out before you end your round. There were a couple of things that did surprise me about the battery though. First of all, there's no external indicator for battery life. There's no screen on this, there's no GPS and you have no way of knowing by looking at just the battery and the trolley itself. Now, Stuart Golf have thought of that because it does come with a free app. And I've got to admit that the app is nice and easy to use and was really easy to connect to the battery. And then when you actually use the app, there's so much information on the battery, more than anyone is ever really going to need, unless you're a technical battery expert. You also have the remote, which you charge via a USB to like an AC adapter. And it says that that should last around two to three rounds. But again, there's no way to know what the battery life is on your remote. And that doesn't show up on the app. One final thing to note with the battery is that you have to take the battery out to charge it. You can't charge it while it's still remaining on the trolley. It's not a deal breaker. It's just that some other golf trolleys give you the option for both. 
At the time of filming this video, there's currently an offer for £300 off, and in the US, it's actually a sale offering $500 off. Now, a big thank you to Stuart Gold for actually loaning me the trolley so I could do the review of it, and if I wanted to, I could have absolutely sung this trolley's praises and then hoped to make a pretty penny on affiliate sales. Now, of course, I have included my affiliate links down in the description below, so if you do want to buy a trolley and you found this video helpful, that'd really help out my channel. But if anyone's actually watched this channel before, that's not why I do the reviews. I do the reviews to give the honest opinion of a normal golfer like myself, to try and help make sure that you buy the right golf tech for you and your budget and your skill level. So, would I recommend the Stuart Q Follow? In the right circumstances, I think I would. First of all, you have to be able to justify the significant cost of this trolley. £1,600 for the base entry model is simply a lot of money. My bog standard M1 electric trolley from Moto Caddy costs at the moment £700. That's less than half. Now, I appreciate it doesn't follow me, but it's still a pretty nice relaxing way to play around a golf. It's just that the follow mode on this trolley that's currently running away from me is a lot more relaxing when it's following you which isn't always. The other thing you've got to consider as well is actually, can you physically handle the trolley or is it going to be too heavy for you? And lastly, are you happy using this remote control? Now, it's not particularly difficult to use, but using a remote won't be for everyone. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of golfers who think that this trolley will just follow you wherever it goes and it will navigate every bunker and every path and it will never fall over and it will make your golf life heavenly. And that's simply not the case. Yes, the follow mode is very, very freeing and it's a great feeling, but that doesn't happen all the time. That probably only happens 50% of the time you're using the trolley. The rest of the time, you're using the remote. And yes, that is nice and easy as well. It means you're not physically pushing the trolley around, so you are saving yourself a good amount of energy, but you're still thinking and having to steer the trolley around obstacles or planning where it needs to go or just remembering that, right, where do I want to put the trolley next? For some golfers, that's going to be great and it's definitely going to be worth the money. For others, they might actually just prefer a normal electric trolley and save themselves quite a lot of money. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. And if you are thinking about buying an electric trolley but have decided that this possibly isn't the right one for you, then why not check out my full review of the Motocaddy M1 or the brand new Moto Caddy S7, or was it the S5? I can't remember, it's an S something. I'll include the link right here.